Welcome to the final episode of Series 39, everyone. This episode came in at a much more reasonable length, and we are so glad that you are here with us. Before we get to the episode and risk making it even longer, we'll just get right to some announcements. If you liked what you've heard this series, uh, please go check out Chimera, currently available on itch.io. If you like the world building and character creation of games like Descent into Midnight, you'll probably really enjoy Chimera as well. So head on over to play.chimera.games and pick up your very own copy. All proceeds will go right back into the game for things like art, sensitivity consultations, layout artists, etc. And for every $15 that the project earns, including tips, another community copy will be added to the pile. This lets somebody else grab a copy if they are unable to afford it at this time, or if they just want to check it out before committing. Again, that's at play.chimera.games, which will take you directly to the itch.io page. We don't have anything else to announce for today, so we will see you right back here after the show for the call to action. Then stick around for the outtakes at the very end. But until then, enjoy the show. discussion episode. Last time we created our characters for Chimera and this episode we're going to be discussing the character creation process um, and we're super thrilled to welcome back Amar Amaraz and Ryan Bolter, the designers of the game, with me, Senda, as your guest co-host. Probably the voice you were surprised to hear when you turned on this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> hopefully they listened to the first hopefully, two episodes. Hopefully and like... the first two. Right. <laughs> like, who's that introducing the show? Um... <laughs> So really quickly, before we jump into the actual discussion part, Amr and Ryan, we're going to have you reintroduce yourselves again for everyone at home and tell us a little bit about the characters you made in our last episode, as well as a bit about the world that we created together. So um, Amr, why don't we start with you? Hi. The voice you're currently hearing is also not the voice you're expecting. <laughs> I'm Amr Amaraz. Uh, I am one of the co-designers of this game, along with the voice you do expect. Uh, you can... Find me doing game design, streaming, podcasting all over the internet at Amaraz pretty much everywhere. That's me. That's the short version. The yeah. short version. Cool. Hey, who, who, did you, who did you make? Oh, yeah. We forgot about the What characters. did I make? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I did some... <laughs> who knows what we Hold did? On. Like, I guess Chimera. this is a show about characters? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. I, I made a character. I thought I have Okay. Um, their name was Nisf Torpedo, and he is the uh, weapon and... Uh, innovator. Not in that order. Not in that order. <laughs> what order is it? But who, who has time for the rules? I know, right? <laughs> Certainly not one of the people that wrote the game. Mm -hmm. Definitely not that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ryan, why don't you tell us about your character and also introduce yourself, I guess, for our guests or our listeners who may not know who you are. Yeah. So. Uh, I am Ryan Bolter. You can find me online at Lord Neptune pretty much everywhere. Um, and, uh, let's see, I am working on Chimera. I do podcasting. I do editing for podcasting. Um, I'm writing a, uh, an audio drama about, uh, superheroes and the most important non-powered person, uh, in their life called Side Heroes, uh, told from the perspective of that non-powered individual. And believe um, it or not, dear listeners, he also has a family somewhere in there. I do. Yeah, somewhere. Uh, and I love them very much. <laughs> um, let's see. I made last episode, uh, Ox uh, is a uh, technically a person from a different world in the solar system um, that uh, became a ghost on this world somehow. And it took a long time to uh, find their way into existence 
as something that anybody else can see. Um, so they're they're an actual ghost. They're the Spirit and the Stranded uh, playbooks, um, and I, I I love them very much. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm glad. <laughs> Excellent. Senda, would you like to tell us about your character? I would love to tell you about my character. I love your really. character. I love your character. I have oh such gosh. a crush on you. Your character loves my character. I do. My she character does. loves your character. I know. <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> um, good. <laughs> With all of that out of the way. Uh, so my character is Lindsay Lindsay Shannon, also known as Els. Um, and, uh, she is the mask and the hopeful, um, are my two playbooks that I blended together. And she also goes by the wheat waif. Um, our world, if you remember from our last couple of episodes is the shape Ooh. of a D12. Um, so she came from the farming pent, um, and a lot of her past and history just has to do with, um, basically constantly working with plants. And, uh, that's kind of where her family's background is. And she throws little sheaves of wheat, um, which is delightful. Um, yes. And, uh, and she has a big old crush on, uh, her brilliance. <laughs> <laughs> that's my Amelia, character. Why don't you tell us about <laughs> Danielle, Danielle Michelle? Michelle. <laughs> Uh, yes, my character is Danielle Michelle, a.k.a. Her Brilliance. Um, I have the uh, demigod and leader playbooks. Um, so she is the child of the deity of life and death. Um, her thing is like, she's going to go among the humans and she's going to figure out this life and death thing and be like the best God of life and death ever. Mm -hmm. Um, because obviously her parent doesn't understand it because they've never experienced life or death. Um, and she's just like, <sighs> what are my traits? Um, I have really high stats in logical and energetic and I'm just really like, I love being in charge and I don't understand why, anybody wouldn't love me because i'm amazing um <laughs> i mean but, i do <laughs> right right um and also like oh the mask though right they're like it's pretty cute oh, man. um <laughs> but like Lindsay, not really not really into that <laughs> <laughs> not into Lindsay. Not I, into, I specifically oh, no. put that in my you know it's um, totally into mask not into Lindsay. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I yeah. put that this the answer to the question, who is your blind spot? I put the mask, not Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. um, but obviously my existence does imply that there are deities as part of our, our world. Um, and we have established some things about uh, my role model, the god of gravity, um, being extremely important. Mm -hmm. So I, there's a lot happening here. I there's just so know. much. Yeah, yeah. Where to go? And, and, go listen to the previous episodes. And, it's yeah. so good. I think There's the one so much. the one other thing we should say if we feel like we need to get it in is the bad guys are the spherists who are trying to make our D12 world into a circle. I mean, yes. a sphere. <laughs> the conspiracy spherists. <laughs> conspiracy spherists. Consp conspiracy spherists. Cons I want a t-shirt that says that I'm a conspiracy <laughs> spherist. <laughs> I would, by the way, that T-shirt. That sounds very funny. <laughs> it's just like a picture of like a like the globe, like the Earth of like round, round, Not, yeah, conspiracy uh, spheres, or like a crossed out D twelve <laughs> <laughs> conspiracy spheres. Delightful. This is really fun to say. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into the actual real part of our show. D twenty for your thoughts. D twenty for your thoughts. This is the segment where we talk to our guests about their thoughts on character creation and how it works in this game and um, their design process. Just all kinds of questions. This is, this is the meat of the discussion, really. Uh, all the stuff before it doesn't count. Um, <laughs> no, this is like the interview portion of our kind of interview show. So our first question for both of you as designers, where do you feel like your best ideas come from and how do they present themselves to you? Do you want to go first, Amr? Sure. My best ideas come from staring into the unending abyss and waiting for game design to strike me. In other words, doing math. 
Oh, we're still um, waiting for the calculations about oh, gravity. Oh, that explains why I'm not a game designer. <laughs> no, um, no so, 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 so my best ideas come from like one of three places. One, it's I do a math thing or I check out a mechanic and I'm just like, oh, oh, this is neat. Can I do something with this? And then like I try to take something from there. And then there's the exact opposite, which is I look at a thing. I'm like, that was fun. I want to tell a story like that. And then I work backwards from there. Um, but more than anything else, I think like the best ideas come from it in conversation with other people, whether it be other designers or Ryan for this project, or just generally looking at other games and being like, oh, huh. Like the idea of signature moves all having plus questions came from looking at Passion de la Passionis and being like, I wonder if we could implement this into our monstrosity of a game. Mm-hmm. And, and it works very nicely. It does. Mm-hmm. Um, for myself, uh, things that people say inspire me, um, like rand- random things. Um, like I-, I was talking about how, Senda, you-, you were talking about something on one of your Pandas Talking Games episodes that sp- literally sparked the idea for this entire game that we covered this series. Um, and like uh, just other random things like oh yeah, somebody's talking about this tension mechanic and I'm like, what other games have tension in it? And I wonder if I can like take Pandemic, the board game, and (laughs) turn that into an RPG or something like that. You know, it's just random stuff that I pick out of uh, different conversations with people that that kind of, that spark that creativity a bit, uh, which is really interesting. Um, And a lot of podcasts do that for me. So... That's why, I mean, it's not why I listen to a bunch of podcasts, but I listen to a bunch of podcasts because it's enjoyable, but also it does spark that that creative flow uh, at times. Hooray for podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I mean, not that anyone here would disagree with that, right? No, um, well, they, I think they're, they're okay. They're fine, I guess. <laughs> As we previously established, they're awesome if you don't have to edit them. Yes! Mm-hmm. Like that! <laughs> Just bring Great. it back around. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta hit it in every episode. Um, Yeah. So what do you as designers look for in a system as far as the actual character creation process or what specific pieces do you think need to be there for great characters to happen to be the result of that process? I think for me, I'm curious to hear Ryan's result as a person who is nominally a host of the show. Yeah. But (laughs) for me, um, characters don't exist in a vacuum. Um, The way I tend to create characters, and you might have noticed across the course of this episode, is I wait a little to hear what others have, and then I fit my character into that slot. Um, And my character, I don't tend to, even even with like systems like PBTA that have relationships, I don't really tend to see my character as complete until the first couple of sessions have happened and I've seen the dynamics in play and I've seen where they slot in. A good character creation system for me th- it could be as crunchy or as lightweight as possible as long as it provides context for the characters, whether that be context in the greater world, context within the story, or context within the group. Mm. I'm the same way. Like, I, I think I need to, like, kind of get a feel for it to, like, kind of, like, play it out a little bit. But it's definitely mm. always more fun for me to do it with other people and play off of other people. Like, I can have a full personality after character creation on my own, and I often do, but I don't have a full character until mm. I've seen the dynamic. And I don't feel as connected to it. Like, I can make a character and everything, but it doesn't feel like mine, yeah. really, until I've been digging in it a little bit. So I have two answers that are uh, kind of polar opposites of one another. Um, one, uh, the collaborative character creation is something that I am absolutely enjoying. If a game has uh, like session zero as a group built into character creation, um, like most PBTA games do. Um I'm a huge fan of that because that tells me that the game itself is going to have a lot of collaborative storytelling uh, and there's going to be a a decent amount of agency. Uh, If there's world building built into that as well, uh, that's that's just an instant in for me because, (laughs) I mean, 
uh, just look at Chimera. And it's my it's my love letter to character creation, basically. Um, the exact opposite of that, though, is uh, can the system let me just unleash my min max beast of a brain? <laughs> <laughs> can, can I gamify the system to create the, the best and most efficient character possible? Um, a la uh, any Palladium game. Um Dungeons and Dragons to an extent, um, things like that, that, that just tickle a different portion of my brain that says, you know, th this character is going to do combat so well, or they're going to be able to craft things so well, or what have you. Um, for, for whatever reason, I love min-maxing, um, and that probably goes back to my time uh, playing RPGs on the Super Nintendo and Genesis and constantly re-rolling my stats until I got perfect everything <laughs> for like three hours straight Aww. for every character. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I it's never fine. did that. Like, it's I don't think I've healthy. ever had like a min-maxed, like, I don't know, I, I've, I tried one time. To like make a like good like min max character in uh, my first D and D game because I knew that those were the people that I was playing with mm -hmm. and like um, and I was just like this is so boring. I, mean, I don't I, know I, if I enjoyed playing I, that. Right, and like that's the thing is that like you like the puzzle part of it of like finding the way to make all of those pieces fit together, and mm -hmm. of course like in that case. It was not a game that I knew well enough to do that, to, like, mm -hmm. make that happen or anything like that. And for me, I'm just like, mm, how can I make this person's life suck? And, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, make this a mess. Yeah. My theory of character for, creation definitely used to be min-maxing mm -hmm. and definitely has morphed into how much of a disaster can they possibly be? <laughs> um, my priorities shifted. But I definitely used to run, you know, third edition rogues with 18 decks that were all elves. So it was really a 20, right? Like, I mean, yep. <laughs> across the uh -huh. board, plus fives, level one, like, just go. <laughs> like, <laughs> and there's something to be said for, like, being really good at your thing. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Like, there's something really fun about, like, being at a table and, like, being like, I'm going to roll my, like, my really good stat. I'm going to, you know, like, this is the thing I'm gonna win. I succeed mm -hmm. at. This is right. We, I mean, we could get into a whole conversation about, um, like, niche, niche protection and that kind of thing, which is very D&D mm -hmm. &D conversation, mm -hmm. which I now have some interesting thoughts about in, in, uh, in context of Chimera, <laughs> potentially. But... Maybe instead we should jump on. We move on to a different question. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, so how do we think that character creation in this game stacks up against other games that we've played? In particular, I want to talk about how it stacks up against other PBTA games because I think that as a show, for sure, we've kind of covered how PBTA hmm. games stack up against, uh, you know, each other or um, games in general. But really, like, this compared to a PBTA game, um, uh, or like a uh, game, not uh, a PBTA game. <laughs> I would say like a, a. It's sort of a modified, isn't it? Right, it's kind of right. a I'm next gen, like right? Because, um, because you, it, 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 the core of PBTA is kind of still there, but the dice have shifted. So, yeah. right, you don't have D six. You have two playbooks. You have like, yeah, um, discuss. And I think on that note, like, I think one of the things I'm most <laughs> critical about the current state of our game and that Ryan and I have been trying different things to deal with is that the character creation can be a lot, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of moving components. We've talked about, like, how in its current form, doing the full character creation at a con means that you're very unlikely to play the game at a con or get a lot of gameplay. And so we, we created, mm -hmm. like, a quick start rule guide for how to do streamlined world building and character creation. Uh, but there's still a lot of components and we want to make sure that information is as mm -hmm. accessible as possible and as easily digestible because you're learning, you know, new dice, you're learning two playbooks, mm -hmm. you're learning a bunch of moves. Um, but on the other hand, I think that it draws on the fingers that people find the most power empowering in PBTA uh, character generation in that it does provide a good basis for your character, both in appearance and personality and 
uh, capability. When you're done with character creation, you don't need to go with a... Let me rephrase. You can play certain games, especially non-PBT games, and create a character who ends up and you have a bundle of stats and numbers, but not necessarily a character. Mm -hmm. PBTA character creation tends to lead you towards having a character by the end of character creation, even if you don't have a concept. Mm -hmm. And I think Chimera does that well. Um, I think it builds you up into having character concepts by the time you get into character creation with the world building and the built-in session zero portion. Mm. Well, I, I think the thing that makes character creation go long in Chimera is that it's it's blended in with world building. We were doing world building before we created our characters. We were doing world building while we created our characters. And we were probably doing world building after we created our characters as well. I mean, yeah. it's it, it's almost impossible um, to to separate the, the world building from the character creation in Chimera, um, which... I think is is a positive thing because when you are building a world together as a group, everybody cares about that world so much more than a prefab setting module of sorts, right? It, it uh, does make it a unique, a uniquely difficult thing to solve for conventions because, and it's really interesting, right? Frequently at conventions, the things that we cut to make a one shot work are the session zero and are the world building, yep. right? And yep. having it blended and in, I can see why that's difficult. the character creation too. Yep. Like, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of places, like you get your pre-generated character sheet and, you know, like yep. you can fill in some like little detail information. But um, I know I, when I run L5R at conventions, I hand people playbooks, basically, like circle these things about your character mm -hmm. and then you can go. Um, but oh. yeah, that does. And, you know, like, Ryan and I are the kind of people that would totally show up to a convention game that was like, we only have time for character creation and world building. And we'd be like, great, here's my 20 bucks. Like, <laughs> yep. I'm for it. Yep. Um, but obviously some people do like a game to yeah. actually play. I mean, I I've, think you'd be happier if you could play it after the coolness that we I just know, made true. too. I'm just saying. I mean, yeah, well, sure. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> it's, it's I don't know. This is my whole podcast. <laughs> so I don't know. I... I think people are familiar with games like Descent into Midnight, and mm -hmm. I had one over in my brain and I forgot. There was another PBTA game. What was it? Uh, I don't remember. Games like Descent into Midnight, where the world is built up through character creation, mm -hmm. it, you will feel similarities there, uh, while also feeling, you know, more traditional PBTA similarities where you're also building up the group dynamics through mm -hmm. the character creation. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I, I know I've had a lot of successes at cons with four hour blocks where the first two hours are character creation and world building. Um, we don't uh, I, I don't allow the group to like go and pull as many threads during mm -hmm. those sessions, uh, because uh, when I did release the reins, um, the thing happens like at the end of Gen Con in 2019 where me, Rich Howard, and a few other uh, amazing individuals uh, did character creation world building for five hours straight yeah, um, and then had no time to play a game. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, honing in and saying we've got two hours for character creation and world building, two hours for actually playing the game, uh, it gives you a nice little taste of the story, uh, but... I have ideas for pre-gens in Chimera that might be pretty interesting to see implemented. So that might be coming in a future version. I think um, it'd be interesting to do, um, you know, for a convention game or something. I wonder if you can, like, reduce the number of questions or, yep. you know, like, that are choices for people to pick or, like, something like that. Just so that, like, yeah, you know, we spent a lot of time on the back and forth on those questions and... Um, mm -hmm you know kind of chatting about those things too and you still want yeah you still want like a really rich world and everything for people to play around in but also mm -hmm. like you don't need as many hooks because you're not playing a campaign exactly. you know you don't have to have all of those choices in there so mm -hmm. it's like it's one of those we, we see that a lot when we talk to people about like the ups and downs of their games or like well i don't really like this part but if you take that away then like it's not the same game so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know uh. it's such a balance uh, and and along those lines, I think another one of the strengths of Chimera's character creation, as opposed to more, most PBTA games, is the customizability of mm -hmm. it, uh, which starts from when you choose your 
genres, right? And you choose mm-hmm. what you're including, but and also any micro genres you might want to add. But it also goes on to how we've attempted to structure a lot of the abilities. Um, like we've we've been doing our best so that every playbook has a clear identity, but could mm-hmm. also be bent in a variety of ways. Like the learn, for example, or let me let me choose an example from one of the playbooks we chose. Demigod. So the demigod, for example, uh, started off when Ryan first wrote it as very explicitly being the way Amelia played it, about someone who literally is a demigod and has a deity parent within the context of whatever deity functions as in the world. Um, Mm -hmm. But we've made some modifications both to the descriptions and then to the domains um, that the demigod has control over. not in the version that you saw here, actually, a version change we made like two days after. Uh, yep. But <laughs> because mm-hmm. of our yes. discussion and creation here. To allow someone to be a demigod in the way Superman is a demigod, in that Superman does not literally have gods as parents, but Superman is raised by mortals and is functionally godly in being Kryptonian, right? And we wanted to allow the abilities to be interpreted as either the domain of a god or, you know, whatever abilities you have that make you stand up above the rest. Mm -hmm. And we've tried to do that with as many playbooks as possible so that you can be flexible with them. Mm -hmm. So as someone who runs short con games, I do have to just call back and appreciate that um, it means that you're constantly running this game in two hours, which I love because I run two hour games at cons all the time. Um, like operatively, you're just running a two hour game with a two hour character creation. <laughs> 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 yep. um, I'm totally into short con games. Um, <laughs> but and, and this is interesting because this I think, Amr, you actually started to address this question just now in your answer. Um, mm-hmm. But how does the process of character creation reinforce the feel of Chimera and then set the expectations for play? And I think part of that is that you're spending that time blending those two characters yep. like you um, were talking about. Yeah, I I think just like the fact that your very playbooks are merged together, the fact that you are constantly referencing between two separate things that merge as perfectly as we get can get them into one thing reminds you that this game is not a game of just like one type of story, one genre, one world, Mm -hmm. but rather one where you are constantly mixing elements from across different things. Even in my case, where I chose two superhero playbooks, I'm still mixing two elements of superhero stories rather than just telling one standard trope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, it, and it's not a, yeah, I've got this part, uh, this genre over here, and I've got this part in this genre over here, and they could be separate entities. What we see a lot is, People take the two genres completely at character creation and and really just get them together and create this interesting blend that you probably never would have thought of. It's the Reese's peanut butter cup of it character creation. It is the Reese's peanut butter cup of character <laughs> you creation. You got your peanut butter on my chocolate. <laughs> you got your magical girls on my super <laughs> yeah. 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 example that is, is what Senda girls. did with, with uh, L's and having the mask literally be the reason that L's got her hopeful powers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and uh, mine, the spirit playbook was the reason I was a ghost from <laughs> the stranded. Um, and it, it's just interesting how they, we see these things blend together so well when, you know, we just created the base playbooks and let people's creativity kind of flow from there. Right. I um, think that's and, one of the things though, like when we were talking about like having a character versus like a character, you know, like, um, you know, like your character sheet full of stats versus like knowing who you are. Um, And I think one of the things that I like about Chimera is that, like, in Masks, I can grab, like, the Doomed playbook. And, like, okay, like, now I know what playbook I'm playing. Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas in Chimera, like, I've grabbed my two playbooks, and I've already told you something about myself. Like, I am, like, a a deity who likes to be a leader. Like, we've already mashed those things together, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, Senda is already, like, a hopeful but also like weirdly unhelpful (laughs) you know what i mean like the way we've combined those things is like you've already started saying something about your character above and beyond what just a playbook would say you know like you haven't even written anything down yet 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, and and that continues through play, right? Mm. As you're going through these stories, you're you're constantly reminded that you're blending multiple genres together. That it's not always a magical girl story. It's not always a superhero story. It's it's a weird amalgamation of both. That that kind of keeps ebbing and flowing between the multiple genres that you have. Well, even uh, when we got to our team question, we were like, actually, not that one question. Let's mash them together. Let's like, mash them together. <laughs> like, can, can we have both? Both is good. Can we have a world ending nemesis? <laughs> or no? <laughs> All of the above. I mean, we might as well, right? But they're definitely yeah. a cult, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, it, yeah. it also helps that that Magical Girls is is technically like a subset of a superhero genre. Magical Girls are superheroes in their own right. But there's there's enough like different types of tropes that you only see really in Magical Girl uh, mm. genre compared to uh, superhero genre. So uh, that's why we can kind of see some similarities there. And you could take either of those prompts and go either way with them mm -hmm. but you'd be able to do that with fantasy and magical girl too or fantasy and superhero or, yes yeah you know and i think i think another nice thing about it too is the fact that like i don't know anything about magical girls i'm not like a particular like fan of that genre but like there's enough other stuff happening with the superhero part that i'm like okay i can get into this like if mm -hmm. you walked up to me and were like here's a magical girl game i'd be like great I guess I will play with you because I like games. Um, <laughs> but like this way, you know, it's like you can take your friend who likes superheroes and you can take your friend who likes magical girls and you can all play a game together. Yeah. And that's absolutely. really nice. Yeah, <laughs> Just it's, it's bringing wonderful. people together with genres. Just bringing people together. That's what's really going on here. <laughs> it's about the friends you made along the way. Yep. <laughs> Let's talk about character sheets. Mm -hmm. This is something that we've started kind of recently asking and i think a thing that we we always kind of talked about um but especially with this game because i know when you sit down and play it for realsies mm -hmm. you get to like mash your papers together um and even with your um spreadsheet that you sent us like when we click it puts the two playbooks together for us mm -hmm. um how hard were these to make <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's not really the question on our sheet is like yeah can you talk about your process and but like how it's a yeah. feat of paper engineering i think so, uh, is where we're going <laughs> i'm gonna leave ryan to talk about the layout because i just kind of like take a <laughs> mile leap back and run into <laughs> another country and let them handle that um yeah. It's, but, yeah it's been fun uh so the it's always been two sheets like one was your primary one was your secondary and uh, the the alpha version was just a hot mess, and you'll probably you probably can see some of that <laughs> As on the alpha camera. versions are often. yeah, it was, it was horrible. But um, since then, uh, we figured out a way to to take it. So, like when you print off these character sheets for in person play or whatever, or if you just want to have a, a version, uh, a physical copy of your character, um, it prints off in two sheets as well. Uh, the primary character sheet uh, folds inwards on itself, so the moves are on the right-hand side, and the character itself, uh, with all the abilities and all your advancement stuff, is on the left-hand side. Folds inwards like a booklet, and then on the outside is kind of the cover page. Um, and then the secondary sheet folds outwards, so that the inside is for notes, and on the outside is your your stuff from your secondary sheet gets inserted into one another like a little booklet and now your primary who you are is paired with the secondary who you are you flip the page there's all of your notes you flip the page again and there's all your moves your secondary is on the left and your primary is on the right because we can't defy the laws of physics when we fold paper um and it just works and it's an interesting like experience when you're you're physically creating your playbook at a convention or or at the table because you normally don't do that you normally have just a sheet of paper it's it's just another level of oh yeah we're blending stuff together here it's like a physical manifestation of the genre blending uh which i just love um 
and and online we had to figure out how to do that too and google sheets was the answer because goodness i can't even think about doing that with pdfs yeah. right oh my gosh no, <laughs> no. Um, so we have all of the archetypes primary and secondary in their own separate tabs and programmatically you can select which ones you want and it will populate the primary on the left hand side and the secondary on the right hand side and allow you to to have those two together on a single tab um and it's really slick it's easy um i've fixed it so that it doesn't hang up uh google chrome or or anything anymore so <laughs> hopefully that's working for everybody now so um, do i get different questions if i pick the demigod as my secondary versus my primary you get uh one less backstory question Okay, but they're the same question. I was like, First, how many yeah. questions did yep. you write? <laughs> yeah, same, same questions. Uh, okay. Yep, and same relationship questions between primary and secondary as well. Yeah. Cool. And so when it comes to like the actual design of the mechanics on the playbook, um, one of the things is making sure that nothing on one side will break something on another side. Mm -hmm. um, and for the most part, the playbooks get designed as somewhat independent entities, just like designing a full PBTA playbook, uh, although that may change. And one of the exceptions, for example, uh, which we added in over the last year was and didn't come up during the character creation is the when you share a moment of intense emotion with someone and your end of session felt uh, actually not just one of the examples is the when you share a moment of intense emotion with someone move, which starts on your primary playbook to tell you what to do mechanically. For example, for me, uh, for the innovator, share with them a time when one of your inventions failed to work as intended, then ask them if they believe your inventions could save the world. And then, based on the yes or no answer, you get your effect from the secondary playbook. And writing all of those so that they worked, no matter which playbooks you had in which order, was one of the things where we had to set a specific structure for how we wrote those so that yeah. it worked. I when we kind of figured out how to do that, that was a, a super interesting moment because it was like, we're literally piecing together this move that you have. Uh, and it, it, it's effects completely change depending on. There's so many permutations. of that. There yeah. are. Um, so if you write them in such a way, it, it kind of blends well into uh the secondary playbook which which tells you what happens when they say yes and no mm -hmm. um and and i i just really like the the whole like we're we're constructing a unique move that only this playbook combination will have yeah that's really neat because like i think you could you know you could do a mix and match like a and b of, of anything but yeah, like I said, because it's so many different permutations that, like, even if I had picked, you know, the leader and then the demigod, like, I would have a different set of, you know, questions mm -hmm. for that. That's really cool. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and, and if, yeah, if you swap them, your share a moment of intense emotion move completely changes. Mm -hmm. oh, that's really neat. It's super mm -hmm. cool. Um, and then the, the signature moves as well uh, was something that, you know, we had to make a move that embodied that archetype mm -hmm. and make it fit in a page or a half of page worth of uh, space. Right. Yeah. Um, so all those signature moves, all the additional moves, default moves, that's that's the hardest thing to fit in. Um, and it's it's been the bane of my existence for these character sheets since the beginning and you'll notice there's quite a few of them that butt up at the very end of the sheet yeah um mm -hmm. no i remember that from when i was trying to like do the layout on like my playbooks i was like how many times can i change the font and or font size yeah to like find the perfect combo of things that you can still read it but it all fits on a page mm -hmm. yeah and and one of the choices in the last couple of versions was uh on the top sheets we pushed all of the 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 really good information about your character towards the middle of the page mm -hmm. so that the primary is on the right hand side of the primary page and the secondary is on the left hand side of the secondary page. So you, you really just have to look down that column mm -hmm. um, and then the kind of the stuff at the exterior is just kind of flavor. You've got your yeah. description of the playbooks, you've got art, you've got experience points, fellowship pool, that sort of stuff. That stuff you don't have to 
kind of worry about. You just keep your eyes in the middle and that that's all you need to be at. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is one of the biggest flaws of character creations in this system? And what do you think is one of the best parts? And I know one of the things we already talked about a little bit is that it does it is time consuming. Right. In comparison to some other Powered by the Apocalypse games. But is there like, is there anything else? <laughs> anything else you'd like to add? I mean, yeah, I think besides the fact that it's time consuming, it can definitely be a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and that's another thing I mentioned beyond just because you're learning so much at once. Um, and finding ways to streamline that, that still maintain the customizability is tricky. Mm -hmm. Um because in a like in a lot of more traditional systems, you have as many options, but they are not all on your sheet at once, right? You pull them into your sheet, you write in whatever choices you make for your class or your uh, abilities at level one, and otherwise your sheet is pretty straightforward. Because of mm -hmm. the part by the apocalypse structure we have, everything is on your sheet at first, and mm -hmm. you're not going to use everything, and you don't even need everything at first, but it's there, uh, and that can be intimidating i've seen that be a thing that like had to ease a lot of people through and along similar lines like option paralysis with just so many choices mm -hmm. i know even for me like like first yeah. looking at them i was like mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> just because i'm that kind of person that it's like a, like a visually overwhelmed too um and, mm -hmm. and that's tough but like you know once somebody walks me through it i'm like oh, okay i know what that's for yeah, yeah that's and daunting <laughs> and it's it's in sections right for that very reason Right. Yeah, you guys did a really nice job of, like, breaking it down and, um, you know, like, making it so I understand why it's there, for mm -hmm. sure. But so other than specifically the whole purpose of this thing, which is you get to merge two playbooks together in amazingly awesome ways, um, what what is the other best part? <laughs> I'm going to make <laughs> you come up with something else. Your game. <laughs> yeah, other than, like, oh. the whole basis of your game. What is the other thing that is the best <laughs> part about this character creation process that you have specifically created to accommodate that genre blending? Mm. Mm. I asked the hard ones. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty proud of the the attitudes and conditions uh, that I came up with. Uh, uh, there is an Easter egg that's kind of hidden in both of those. I'm not sure if anybody has noticed. One person has. Um, in all of the playtesting, one person did notice it without any prompting. Um, I won't spoil it. Oh, I know here. this. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell us how uh, we, we stop can, recording. Can, <laughs> I, can, I can say it now and Ryan can cut this out. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. Carry on, carry on. Carry on. No, if, if okay. you noticed it, I, I would love to hear. Oh, okay. So... <laughs> I assume. I assume that was the. That's exactly your, it. No. Your adorable little acrostic there. Yeah, that took a lot of the th th thesaurusing. Um, <laughs> we did, and we did talk about that, like the names for like the you know archetype looks and stuff like that. I think mm -hmm. um, there's there's a part of me that really wants to say that there's another secret thing, even though there isn't, and just like have that be a thing everyone <laughs> looks for forever. It's fine. Just cut this bit out so that everybody else will have to discover it on their yeah. own. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's fine. Uh, but um, hmm. but yeah, aside from the genre blending and the blending of the two playbooks uh, for character creation in Chimera, um, one of the things that I do love the most is um, when the backstory and relationships in this game um, pull in that that blending and world building. Um, more than I've seen in, in a lot of other games. Um, like this game was heavily inspired by Descent into Midnight's character creation. Um, and if, for those that are familiar with that, um, you you might know what I'm talking about. Uh, for those not familiar, we did a whole series on it. Uh, go check it out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a great game it's a very, very good game agree um, hey i played it too you could also go listen to it on she's a super geek uh, ah, you, you see, could. We, didn't, we didn't play it they can oh, go we listen built characters to your podcast and we played it oh that's <laughs> okay so you think you're better than us because we just built characters <laughs> 
Um, but the the world building in uh, Descent into Midnight uh, kind of blends with the the character creation because you create characters first in in Descent into Midnight, um, and then infer the world from that. This is kind of reverse, where we're building the world and then pulling the world uh, into the the characters as well, and put, and and our place in it, uh, which I, which I always find extremely uh, exciting how people answer those questions. Mm-hmm. So to answer Senda's very specific question of like, which I think best supports the blending besides, you know, all the hard work with those plants. Yeah, because you know, yeah. that, that wasn't that. enough for her. Well, yeah. no, yeah, it's yeah. just that we've already talked about how cool it is. Yes. And I want to give you the chance to talk about something sure. else. <laughs> right, mm-hmm. but you asked what supports the blending specifically. Yes. <laughs> and the answer, I think for me, like one of the, one of the parts that really helps with that is the trope list you established up front. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Because yeah. that, as mentioned, gives an idea of what the group is interested from the genres. And so when you are building up your character, you can look at those tropes and pull in bits and pieces and suddenly your character has little bits of both genres because they have bits of tropes from both of them. Mm -hmm. Um, Though generally, what is my favorite part of the character sheets? Uh, I am very proud of the relationship questions. I ended up like writing most of those and so I'm just proud of those. They're very good. I very much enjoyed them. So thank you. I kind of forgot about like the trope checklist at the beginning like it was oh my god it was so long ago um i mean i know i did reference it at one point in our our, like the end of last episode when we were talking about stuff and i was like didn't Mm -hmm. we say that that, you know um but like i think that did a really good job in the beginning of like establishing like okay here's here's what we're working with um and you know here's here's the fun bits that i want to play with that i Mm -hmm. like as a player i'm interested in um and like obviously it was critical to our character creation, but like also I forgot that we did, um, which means that it wasn't hard. It was not a thing that I had to like think really hard, but it was just like, yes, this, 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 and this, let's go. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, like that was really cool at the beginning. We even have one uh, trope to define still, uh, the teammate that we lost to our greatest enemy. Uh, that's that's what our fan it. fiction section is Exactly. <laughs> is that our next question anyway? Uh, is it? Uh, yeah, it is. So that was a great segue, actually, <laughs> uh, because we are in our fan fiction section. Tell me about the teammate that we lost. Ooh, yeah. I should say that into the microphone. Tell me about the teammate we lost. <laughs> so, so that's an interesting thing. So, did we have a fifth person at that initial battle? Yes. Yeah, Did we, we, we yes. had to because that's when we became a team, right? Yeah. Is that is that fifth person, uh, did we lose them that battle or did we lose them later? Or are we going to cheat and say that the fifth person was actually Ryan when he was alive? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, my gosh. No, no, <laughs> no. I, we're not. I, I, to me, it is most interesting if we all came together, including that fifth person, won that battle and then either at the end of that battle or later on in you know episode three <laughs> whatever mm-hmm. it was after we've had long enough to care long about enough them. to really just really care right then mm-hmm. we lost that person mm-hmm. who is obviously did they, dead did they die die or did they become a spherist oh Oof. No, they, well, that's the thing, well, right? They're obviously very, very dead, just like yes. Amr's, you know, um, mentor. mentor yeah. His mentor one hundred percent dead, hundred percent dead until season four. No possible way they could yeah. ever have survived that. Yes, we saw them get disassembled by those those weird disassembly oh, no, bot the, things. It was the little bugs. It was the little like nano bug. Oh, yeah. no. Bug things. oh no, <sighs> that's terrible. And, and there's no way that they can get reassembled. No. Yeah, there's no right? way that no, they're no, ever no. going to come back as a nanobot. <laughs> Why would they? Thing. They're gone. We're good. Yeah. We lost them. Absolutely. They probably. That is our greatest shame and failing in life. <laughs> um, I I would love to name this character Bombshell. But... I wasn't gonna say anything. <laughs> I was holding it in. <laughs> no, obviously. I think we said at the beginning, didn't we? Yeah. That somebody. Bombshell I think was the we best said of us. when we determined that we had one that oh, we lost. That's... We said Bombshell. Bombshell was the best of us. She yeah. was the best of us. She was the best of us. <laughs> Poor bombshell. <laughs> Poor bombshell. Yeah, okay. I mean, I think that that's. I don't know how much is there left to define. You're you're 
character creation and world building really like kind of messed up this question for us. Yeah. Hey, we, I mean, we did yeah. a lot what, of this, yeah. What sort of shenanigans do we get up to? Like, <laughs> well, I mean, we're trying to fight off the and, yeah. uh, college, you know, there's like a lot of mundane fun college stuff and like yeah like did we get invited to the party or not like obviously young, young i did adult. but Lindsay didn't i know i spend a lot of my time <laughs> sneaking into parties and mooning after danielle <laughs> who ignores me right yeah that's a lot of my and life. i i try my best to be <laughs> a normal uh you know late teens uh equivalent uh, individual. I'm, I'm the person that walks in with the skateboard uh, floating over my shoulder and I say, hello, fellow youths. <laughs> yeah, how are your grades? I'm probably... <laughs> and then there's at least one scene where Nis has to like go into a room and like take all of their guns and knives out. <laughs> and, no knives, and just then guns. somebody goes, just guns. and the other one. And I do have a gun that shoots that knives. That's at separate. Least once. Yeah. Yep. You, you probably have a knife gun. No, I have a gun that shoots knives. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And there's probably um, a knife that is a gun. Uh, there's a knife no, that's a gun, a no, gun that shoots knives, no, a knife yet. with guns not engraved yet. on it, <laughs> a gun with <laughs> filigree that looks like knives. Uh, uh, also, I don't know this why This is just is, a bayonet. <laughs> I also don't know why everyone is talking so much about, like, trying to act like normal teens. I'm a perfectly well-adjusted member of society. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I am a perfectly average member of society. Thank you very much. I do yeah, I know, perfectly. The I, I'm the top of my engineering class. I don't <laughs> see the problems here. I, <laughs> I like everybody else, enjoy explosions. <laughs> <It's fine>. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, I am corporeal. I think this was very, very much in that, like, I know how to make explosions. So I am the person who causes the least lab fires mm. in engineering class because I am the most fit to cause them. Well, you actually know yeah. how to, because you know how to cause them, you also know how to not cause them. And how to yeah. be safe when they happen. Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> nice. Now, one thing I didn't mention, you said uh, corporeal. One <gasps> thing I didn't mention about my character is when I transform, um, I become solid. What? Oh. Uh, but, like, I'm still, like, I'm not, like, as transparent or anything like that, but I'm still, like, I, I'm just more... I. I'm like physically there at You're that like point. Nebulous yeah. still. Yeah. Like a like a nebulous physical I have a it's very ethereal? important question. I don't yeah. yeah. What is everyone majoring in? Oh that's a good question. Obviously for me it's communications. <laughs> <laughs> Obvious. I was gonna say philosophy. Yeah, um, it was gonna be one of those. I was like, "What is the most white girl uh, yeah. option?" But I went with communications. Sorry to my sister who is a communications major right now. <laughs> uh, I think that I must be in like um, either animal science or like um, uh, 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 um, oh, I thought like maybe like urban planning yeah it was like i'm losing my words here for these things mm. but maybe 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 urban planning would be a really good one be interesting Ooh. like because then it's all about like where do you put the trees <laughs> like where do you put the actual trees? agricultural and sciences yes agricultural sciences we could do all of those mm -hmm. but i think the problem is i don't think i actually have very good grades because i spend all of my time um feeling like i have to protect um um, 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 um ox Ox. And mm -hmm. like at the same time mooning after Danielle. And then like your priorities are all out of My smarts. priorities are super messed up. This is it's specifically a thing on my sheet that I've had to like deprioritize my personal life. And I think like I have to 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 maintain like my off campus apartment so that I can do all the things I need to do as the mask. I have to have like a part time job on top of everything. So I'm like, what is your part time parking. job? Um, I think I think I'm a barista. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, you are! So so, so oh, oh, oh! See, part of the reason that I'm accidentally always there when things happen is because the cafe that I work at is the same one that y'all hang out at for like coffees and stuff after school. Oh my gosh! Uh, I think oh, that must so be it. <laughs> I I can imagine that Els like tries to get everybody's names spelling correctly. Cause and, on, but isn't, the, she isn't actually people. super good at it. Right? Like, <laughs> oh, that's got to tear uh, her up inside. Yeah, so every time she writes it down <laughs> wrong and then somebody's like, swirls. Like, <laughs> she's like, oh, no, that was wrong. Oh, yeah. Ryan's character oh. goes in there and like, 
says her full name. <laughs> <laughs> and every time, it's like, the only one. It's the only one you get right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you. It's perfect. It's perfect. Uh, but mostly I just put something steamy in front of you so that I guess you can like waft the mist. And- I, I inhale the steam. Yes. The mist. Yep. It's really just like it's all you order. It's just a cup of hot water. With like flavoring I like the, in it. I like the spice, the spice spell. Yeah. yeah so mm. like just a hot, hot water steamed. So it's like really hot. Mm. And then just with a pump of something in it so that, yeah. you know, it's got good like... You, occasionally to to try to fit in i will like drink right <laughs> and the liquid you can see go down and like through you and just, lands just on kind the of seat. just sit there does it just go right <laughs> through you and just sit on the chair underneath you if i don't if i don't use my uh psionic abilities yes oh, there you go uh but if i concentrate hard enough i can just hold it inside oh, of me and then like i don't know <laughs> look very bad uh-huh. <laughs> can you go outside and do that mm-hmm. <laughs> i, I okay, imagine so that we have communications and then agricultural sciences, yeah, agricultural or sciences. Or yeah. something like that ryan what did you say i i would probably do uh history history major history. and then what engineering no, like, actually, I don't think so. Like, what am I going to learn from an engineering degree nothing. at this point? You don't already yeah, know. Uh, I do take engineering classes, and I do better than all the engineering majors, and it pisses them off a lot. <laughs> uh, You're taking, because like, engineering the majors get real, con- like, get real, real, um, like, we're engineers. We're the ones who are supposed to be the best. Uh, I think my <laughs> actual major, um, hmm. I think maybe it's like fashion design, so you can make the suits look better. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, or like theater because you do all you manage all the special effects for the tech uh, team. Yeah, so you do all the tech stuff. I think that's like my extracurriculars. Oh, yeah. Like I do theater. I'm also like I'm. I don't show up to like most of the clubs, but I'm somehow like the head of special effects of theater. I am <laughs> the captain of like four different martial arts teams on campus, yes. uh, including fencing. And like, <laughs> I never show up to any practices. I just show up to the tournaments for those, and I still. Do you even <laughs> go to this school? Are you even enrolled here? Uh, <laughs> Maybe I'm not. Maybe, Maybe I don't have a major. Really what's happening. I don't have a major. I I just like I take I take some history classes uh, because I want to learn about uh, just like villain groups, right? Because I'm curious about that. I do. I go engineering classes mostly for access to the labs, not for the actual projects or the like education. I just do the tests and like go to the labs and then don't show up to lectures there. Like, so you just and like, then, like, like audit random classes. You don't actually like yeah, yeah. go here. You're not no. getting a major. You're just taking classes. No, exactly. So, like when you go to the labs, you're probably just working on something completely different because you don't get Yes. <laughs> um everyone like will see my project and be like that seems unsafe here and I just go has it exploded yet? Oh, no, it won't explode and then continue working on it. It will when I want it to. Exactly. <laughs> like the, the actual project that you were supposed to be doing has already been completed in five minutes and then yep. you're just using the rest of the time for your own stuff. You're like, yeah, I did it over there. And it's like still better than everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, I love this. I love this team. This is so good. This uh, is so good. Okay, so... Let's get into our last segment here, which is our advancement segment where we take it up a level. Ooh, sound effect. <laughs> sound effect. There's a fancy sound effect for this. Good. It is. Do, 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 do. Take it up a level. Take it up a level. In this segment, we cover character advancement and character growth. So we will start with uh, characters' mechanical growth. Um, how do they level up and how do they change mechanically when that happens? Uh, so everything we're about to tell you is a lie. <laughs> uh, not really, wow. but we are planning on re-examining advancement for some of the next version. So, so mm-hmm. all this could change, but it's pretty standard PBTA stuff. Um, you have a potential track that when it fills up, you take an advancement, you mark potential whenever a move tells you, or whenever you roll a miss currently. Mm-hmm. Um, we're considering some other things to add in, uh, some some different advancements and some changes with that. But currently, there are common advancements that everyone has. Uh, and once you've taken a few of those, you unlock your playbook-specific advancements, which uh, give you your signature move on your secondary playbook, some extra features and abilities and stuff for your signature move on your primary playbook, etc. Mm-hmm. Yep, and uh, once you get into those advanced uh, advancements, I guess you could call them, um, 
there is also the retirement uh, advancement that you can have where if you think your character's story is done um, or you've gotten to that point, you can select one of those uh, retirement advancements. And what we did here is we, we have two different retirement tracks for every archetype. So in the end, you've got four different choices of how you want your character to go out. Um, so for some, the, you could be going out in a blaze of glory. Uh, for some, it's retiring and uh, teaching at the local university for the rest of your life or whatever. <laughs> um, so there, there's all sorts of different ways you can you can lead up to how you want your character to kind of uh, exit the game at that point. Uh, which is, I, I feel, is a lot better than this is the only option you have. Mm -hmm. Sure, definitely. I like that it gives you a choice because I think mm -hmm. that, you know, depending on, especially once you've, like, combined different playbooks and all that kind of stuff, like a, a one-size-fits-all thing is just not going to mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. um, I Generally, advancement looks like it does in other PBTA games in terms of what it does for the narrative and for the character. Mm -hmm. um, you have, I think, a little bit more flexibility to go deep into your character in Chimera than most PBTA games do. I think one of the common criticisms I've seen of PBTA games is that you can end up borrowing things from other playbooks and you sort of lose your core identity a little, mm -hmm. which is especially a problem with PBTA games with less playbooks. And so generally that means if you're taking a move from another playbook, you're taking a move from another character. And so you become more like another character at the table. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I could definitely which, see that. Uh, Chimera, A, that is not a problem when we have... <laughs> There's 18 playbooks, playbooks already, yeah. at least 30 playbooks planned, yeah. hypothetically infinite playbooks. You will never have a problem there. Mm -hmm. uh, but more specifically, I think there's, there's flexibility in the advancements in that you can choose advancements that focus entirely on your core playbooks and never take an advancement that requires you to look at another playbook and have about 10 to 12 different advancements, I think, off the top of my hand. Or you could never look at your playbooks again and start borrowing advancements from other playbooks until you retire. Mm -hmm. um, it gives you a neat flexibility in that way. So um, how would you say that, um, like, as you actually advance and you take more advancements, um, mechanically... Of course, you take more advancements, right? Um, narratively, how do you see that play out in the actual story that you are telling at the table? Yeah, I think it really depends on which advancements you're taking, right? Um, like one of the things that I baked into all of the advancements for the Magical Girls is uh, in the uh, when you select extra abilities, um, there is a uh, an advancement. So for mine, it says select a spirit ability uh, and then enhance your transformation sequence the second time this is chosen. So you can choose it up to twice. So if you fill in that and you get as many abilities as you can get for this playbook, you get to kind of narratively beef up your transformation sequence. This is kind of like the uh, the you know sailor moon going eternal or whatever sort of deal right um this is like i was great before but now i'm even better um and it, it kind of adds to your character's narrative at that point um other things selecting moves from other playbooks you you would probably be learning those things from other people or picking up on things from uh, the world that you're in um and and there might be some moves that give you special things and you know narratively you're going to have to be able to explain how you got those things you can't just be like oh now i have a pact of the weapon from the bound playbook um which is part of the fantasy genre it's like well how do you explain that okay it well now i got laser eyes so let's go you, you now <laughs> have you have a warlock weapon that yeah. is bound to like a entity that grants you its power through this sword. How did you get that? Yeah. Yeah, hold on, we're gonna talk Does it about have to, that. That raises a question: Does it have to be from a playbook with the genres you're using, or can it be any Chimera playbook? Yes. Like, no one's ever yes. asked. Obviously, me if you can, you can, you can do whatever you want, right? You you're have like, I'm not coming all your house. <laughs> Right, so the moves are all compatible. It's yes. not like if you were playing like one PBTA game and you took a move from another PBTA game, it just it would take some yeah. fiddling. They work. It's just not necessarily the genre's core to your game. But if 
group and or the game master and mm-hmm. or you are interested or cool with it. Yeah, so I guess the question not. is, would you suggest that? As, right. Or would you I, say, I would suggest, like, I would avoid it? I would suggest <sighs> sticking to the genres that you're using with one yes. caveat. Um, in the superhero genre, the Stranded Playbook has a default move where you are working towards your way home. Mm. And once you fill up that progression track, um, you unlock the ability to go back home and back to this world as well. Um, oh, and, in which case something else might make sense. Mm-hmm. Right. And in doing so, you create that other world. When you create that other world, you can select genre tropes from genres that you're not including in your main game. So that could be, in in our situation, we've got Magical Girls and Superheroes Blended. My home world could be fantasy and superheroes blended. And we would pick tropes from those. And maybe if my world still wasn't destroyed and sphericalized or whatever, Mm -hmm. uh, if it still exists and we go back there and I learn stuff from that fantasy genre, it might be genre appropriate for me to pick additional moves from the fantasy genre uh, in, in a campaign for this. So the other thing I'll say about the advancement is there is nothing mandatory in terms of how it shapes the narrative. Uh, I think one of the things I hope to do with our next iteration is to add some suggestions on what that might look like, similar to what Ryan said. But because this game is meant to be flexible, there isn't necessarily a, okay, you took a move from the playbook, you have to learn it from someone else. Mm -hmm. But if your character takes an advancement that's like, I gain a new ability, chances are other characters will comment on that in the narrative. Because if you suddenly start shooting fireballs and you could never do that before, they'd be like, hey. What happened? What's going on? Even if it's like a quick conversation, there's at least some narrative generated there. Yeah. Um, But yeah. um, The narrative is as much or as little as you want from it Mm -hmm. when you advance. Absolutely. So, okay, here's a question that I wanted to ask. Um, okay. And I meant to, like, put it in that line, and then, you know, I fell and broke my hand and had surgery and all that. What genres do you either want to work on next, or do you hope people make for this game? Like, what is something that you really would love to see? I think for genres. Um, so one microgenre, that I, two microgenres that I have drafts of that I – need a lot more fiddling because I wrote them on an airplane three years ago or two years ago, uh, like four hours of sleep. Um, so they, and I have not (laughs) been touched since. Which is when everybody does their best work. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Um, are the romance and punk micro genres. Mm -hmm. Uh, so like the punk micro genre could then be combined with like either someone could then take it and build out a full cyberpunk genre using that basis or someone else could build like a sci-fi genre and then you could add the punk to sort of turn into a bit of cyberpunk Mm -hmm. right uh and i really want to do those and i'm also really interested in like making a full mystery genre personally Mm -hmm. like because we have the mystery micro genre which allows you to add a flavor of mystery to any game you play but mystery itself varies so much from like procedurals to detective fiction Mm -hmm. to like suspense and i kind of want to make probably detective fiction because that's one of my favorite genres of mystery Mm -hmm. um i really enjoy like Agatha Christie style stories. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, like a, a cool like noir style. Yeah, thing. noir is another one that you could have. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had talked about like uh, if you had archetypes for like the mystery genre, like those archetypes would help you solve mysteries better because they're they're baked into that sort of thing. So if you have um, a blend of a superhero and a mystery genre character archetype. Now your superhero is just better at solving mysteries, right? And then yeah. you're also going to be playing a campaign that is, or, or a one shot that is for sure going to be an overarching mystery of some sort, yeah. right? Um, um, so that would be super interesting. Uh, I'm also like, even with superheroes and mystery, you have very distinctive tonally between, say, like Spider-Man Noir and Jessica Jones and mm-hmm. uh, Daredevil and like all of them do mystery and superheroes, but operate in different tropes of mystery. Yep. Definitely. Um, for myself, uh, my first answer would have been uh, cyberpunk. Uh, as the next genre, because I really, really want to blend Magical Girls with Cyberpunk. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, like that, 
that's been on my next to do list uh, since the beginning of selecting these three uh, for the main genres. Um, after our discussion at the beginning of the character creation episodes in this series, I really want to do a Western. Mm, yes. Uh, genre I mean, also, as yes. Well. Yes. And I've, Sir, I've, yes. I've already uh, like figured out the names of six uh, archetypes for a Western oh gosh, genre. You have. <laughs> Do you not sleep? <laughs> I'm like, uh, Brian just I mean, dreams in playbooks. It's true. Um, I I do have uh, ten potential archetypes for cyberpunk as well, uh, kind of plotted out, and uh, I I really want to do a like a science fantasy type, you know, like like a, a a Star Trek sort of interplanetary narrative of sorts, right? Mm. Um, where you could do either Space Star Discovery. Trek or Star Wars or or what whatever. Well, I, Star Wars is different, yeah, I like, but I would like to do a space opera do, one. Yeah. Right, I'd like to do a space opera one. Space opera and Star Trek and Star Wars space, Wars space exploration Wars. would be two very cool mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. genres. Yeah. So those there's are kind of infinite infinite the genres we could do. I've yes. got so many genres at the top yes. of my yeah, list. Like, here's the thing. It's like, I wish I knew more about like designing in PBTA because I'm like, I love trope, tropey tropes, trope, 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 mm -hmm. tropes. Uh, but I don't know how to design games. So. I mean, at least our goal with this is that micro genres should be easy for someone to design. Genres are also relatively easy, but there are a lot of work because you have to design the playbooks and the playbooks involve a lot of moves and a lot of like writing and mechanics. Mm -hmm. But a micro genre, like if you wanted to add a little bit of sci-fi flavor to your game is two moves, a core mechanic, and some tropes. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's it. That's all you really need. You could also add some GM moves if you're feeling kind to the GM. Mm -hmm. But all of it comes in about two pages, usually. All our micro genres fit in a couple hundred words in two pages. Mm -hmm. And so hope is to provide tools that anyone could be like, oh yeah, I really enjoyed this genre. And while I don't want to spend time writing all the playbooks, I want to add a little bit of flavor of it to my game. Here's how I can do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Well, we can't wait, I think, to see all the more genres that you continue to add, because it's very exciting mm -hmm. to watch it just broaden out, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there anything else that you that we might have missed that you want to make sure that people know or hear about Chimera? I mean, it's it's evolving uh, constantly uh, towards the better, I think, right now, um, as we get closer and closer to... Uh, a potential Kickstarter uh, down the line, uh, you know, this game is going to be uh, just getting better and better uh, and more streamlined uh, and easier to to access and and play games with friends and all that sort of stuff. So you can you can keep in tabs on all of that. Uh, I'm trying to keep a relatively robust uh, devlog on itch on our itch page. Uh, so you can go to play.chimera.games and, and find all the, the cool stuff that we're talking about there. Um, and I'm just really excited for the next version when we get to add 12 more playbooks. Yeah. Mm. Uh. That's a lot of playbooks. <laughs> it is a lot of playbooks. What's wrong uh, with you? Well, there are so hopefully many... in the future, we won't have to write like, more playbooks. Uh -huh. My experience, my uh, personal experience with writing PBTA is that moves are like, they look really easy on paper, but they're like so hard to write. So I am mm -hmm. not jealous of all the moves that you are writing, but Amara, I'm no. sorry, because I interrupted you. Please continue. No, no. <laughs> I was going to say, um, one of the other things to look forward to is, especially as we, if once we eventually get to Kickstarter, part of the reason we're keeping it to free genres and right, right now we only had 18 playbooks, even though originally there was a point where there were 30 fully designed playbooks. Mm -hmm. Uh, is because by narrowing it down, we could focus on the core mechanics and making sure that those playbooks set the standard for what we want. Mm -hmm. And so we're probably going to be with the free core genres for a little bit until we've fiddled out every single bit that the game itself is relatively static. But after that point, not only will there be more genres, hopefully with Kickstarter and stuff, we can get other people on and mm -hmm. pay them to write genres. And then you could get to see all sorts of talented and creative people off the internet. Yeah. One of uh, who only exist on the internet, by the way. Yeah, they're not they real. Um, <laughs> you can't convince me any of our game designers sure. who have been to cons. They're not. They're, sure. they're all holograms, by the way. They're all like, so if you've been to a game design con, basically, there's just a bunch of robots that go around that have holograms that pop up of the game Correct. designers. Yes. That's true. That sounds right. Yeah. <laughs> now, one, one of the things that I want to also do uh, is like game specific genres, like being able to convert uh archetypes from another game so uh, we could 
we could maybe talk with like the the descent and midnight crew and descent and the midnight crew could create uh some archetypes for chimera right obviously we would pay them for this work and then you'd be able to blend our existing genres with chimera specific uh but with the flavor of descent into midnight for instance uh archetypes and then have that sort of interesting uh blend um or do that with like monster hearts or or whatever i mean the the possibilities are kind of endless there as long as a game has playbooks maybe we can adapt it to a chimera and uh maybe you could even do that for your own home games and stuff too i would like so, to so make some more um spooky playbooks I would like to request that there needs to be more blood magic. There needs to be more necromancy. Yep. Oh, there needs I to mean, be more evil. I was going to suggest one of the, uh, uh, this little game called Hydro Hackers. Then you could move, like blend Hydro Punk in with everything. Just yeah. Saying. yeah <laughs> I have absolutely. that one on the bookshelf. Right? What I'm hearing <laughs> is that if I ever need to distract Ryan for like a long period of time, I can get him started on doing the conversion for Palladium characters to Chimera, <laughs> and then I'll just not see them for like yeah. two years until oh. they figure it out. Just be oh, there's too many. There's too many. I just saw your well, eyes. You better go. start working on your Ninja Turtles Chimera playbooks. <laughs> hey, once somebody makes a Ninja Turtles PBTA game, uh, let me know, and uh, <laughs> we'll see if we can make a Chimera version. I will not be there for that. No. <laughs> well, I know how I feel about it. I know. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just call it there. Like the, uh, there are four people here, two of whom actually host this show. <laughs> Not me. Senda being the person that keeps it on track. <laughs> Which is sort of astonishing, isn't it, considering my track record? But I am here to be professional. <laughs> <laughs> but she's hungry, so let's wrap it Probably. up. Probably. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell them that. Yeah. So thank you both so much for being here uh, to talk about Chimera. It sounds extremely cool. And it was great having you on as guests on this show that is obviously mine. It has <laughs> been a mind-blowing experience being a guest on a show that is definitely not mine yeah, at all. Yeah, good. Great. <laughs> great. Great. <laughs> Do you want to remind everybody, both of you, where they can find you and the stuff that you're working on? Ryan. I guess I can go. I can oh, go. Ryan Ryan goes. Yes, yes, Ryan somebody goes. Uh, yeah, okay. No, My Ryan name is uh, Ryan Bolter, and I am a game designer of Chimera, the game that we covered this, uh, this series, and um, also occasionally a co-host, apparently on a character creation cast podcast uh, that nobody's ever heard of, and um, <laughs> also do editing and sound design for A Horror Borealis and The Broadswords. Uh, and also doing a audio drama that I'm writing currently, season one for Side Heroes. Um, you can find pretty much all of my projects listed on my Twitter at Lord Neptune. Hi, I'm Amr Amarez, a professional streamer, game designer, podcaster, using my professional streamer, game designer, podcaster voice, and I don't know how much longer I can keep this bit out without laughing. But you can find me everywhere on the internet at Amarez, specifically my Twitter, uh, my itch. You can also find me on the Chimera itch. If you go to play.chimera.games, you can acquire this game for your very own self, uh, including all the materials that we use today and more some of the materials that we've teased that are going to be coming. Uh, other than that, catch me on streams such as on Saturday on the Lark Network, Super Splash of Color stream weekly every Saturday morning at 12 CST. And yeah, just keep an eye out on my Twitter for all the other various places I appear or other various projects I take a part in. That's it for me. <laughs> I love that voice. I managed to keep the voice up the entire time. You Thank you. you did. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> See, the problem isn't doing the voice. The problem is doing the voice and not yes. laughing. <laughs> it's okay. When I do the voice, I sound like Siri, so I don't usually. <laughs> I'm going to give you Google Map directions. <laughs> I have to like Turn come up with I don't know if I have a, oh, yeah. a good voice. Senda. Thank you for being my co-host and keeping everything on track. You're so welcome, um, Amelia. <laughs> it's so fun having you on again. This is a good time. Uh, do you want to tell people where they can find you and the things that you are working on? Yes, gosh. Uh, now I have to include the things that I am working on, huh? That's The list is going to get longer. I mean, only if you want well, to. Well, I'm going to because it gave me the opportunity. So um, <laughs> you can mostly <laughs> find me on Twitter. It's at Idella Mifland, I-D-E-L-L-A-M-I-T-H-L-Y-N-N-D. 
Yes, you can spell it really fast. Or you can find me at Pandas Talk Games, which is Pandas Talking Games, the podcast where I chat with gaming mogul Phil Vecchione about gaming topics that we get from listeners. We basically will answer whatever you want us to chat about. We'll chat about it. Let us know. Um, and you can find the back episodes of She's a Super Geek um, at sasgeek.com or your podcatcher of choice. Um, I do some articles over at Gnome Stew. Um, and uh, if you want to catch up with my game designs, you can catch um, Love and Justice, uh, the uh, Hydra Hackers, Alpha, Beta, no, wait, Ashcan. There we go. That was the right word. Um, the, the, the Hydra word. Hackers Ashcan, which I did a bunch of development work for. Um, the Quick Start for Turning Point is up on Drive Through RPG. And um, you can also get uh, Connections is in the Love and Resistance um, game compilation that just came out. There's more stuff, but that's all the stuff that you can easily get your hands on in this exact moment. Cool. <laughs> Wow. Thank you, all of you, for sitting down with us. Um, and thank you to everyone for tuning in. Call to action. Yeah, like that. I really wish I could have caught Amelia today to record this with to get her thoughts on the game, but maybe I will do that next time. I know I thoroughly enjoyed the game, though I am a little biased. However, having said that, it warmed my heart to hear some of the discussion that Amelia and Senda brought to the table this episode, and I am really glad they enjoyed the game so far. And I wanted to send an extra thank you out to Senda for stepping in as guest co-host for this entire series. Uh, you were fantastic, Senda, and we would be so happy to have you on anytime you'd like. Now, before we head out and get to the outtakes, we have just a couple announcements for you. One thing I'd like to highlight is previous guest on the show, Tracy Barnett, is currently doing a Kickstarter for You Are the Dungeon. We had a ton of fun covering that game in our series, and now you can back the Kickstarter to back a really fun campaign. If we can get the funding all the way to 30k, a physical tarot deck will be created with custom images on them to help inspire your dungeon creation even more. So, check out a link to that in the show notes. Another thing to keep in mind on the way out of this episode is to check out play.chimera.games and pick yourself up a copy if you would like. If you already got a copy, or love what you heard, we would love it if you would leave a rating or review on the Chimera page, or just tell your friends about the game or about these episodes if they are familiar with the show. Either way, we are just really happy to have had you here for this series. But join us back here in three weeks to see if I was fully usurped as a co-host by Senda, or if I'll rise from the ashes and be here for some epic character creation with Amelia and our guest. That'll make sense when you hear what our next game is. Until then, take care everyone, stay safe, and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. 
This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com where you'll find other great shows like A Horror Borealis. A Horror Borealis is an actual play Monster of the Week podcast set in the 1990s in the fictional town of Revenant, Alaska, just south of the nation's least visited national park and way north of everything else. A reclusive small game hunter with a magical secret, a young anarchist librarian with a passion for conspiracy theory, and a sensible park ranger with a strong local book club following find themselves pulled together by common threads woven mysteriously into their past when monsters begin plaguing their tiny community. But they soon discover the things they're fighting run much deeper and much closer to home. Tune in for a story about identity, empathy, community, mental illness, and healing, and stay for the beloved local diner. I see I waveforms. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah, yeah. You, there are good, the good waveforms. The here, good even. kind of waveforms. You even I said think so. clicky, which just. <laughs> 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 I, I told you, it's the send a method. It is. In fact, um, there was uh, Phil was telling me about the other day, one of the gentlemen uh, uh, timed them in to go to start from a striked mark, and he said, record instead of clicky. And they were all like, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> so <laughs> that's the wrong word. Yeah. I don't understand. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> yeah, what do I do now? I don't know. <laughs> Instructions unclear. <laughs> record what? <laughs> I was supposed to click. Yeah. That's the whole point. So, that that also made me giggle. There you go. All right. I'm feeling very strange because I don't do anything as a host. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) yeah. Shut up, Ryan. We're going to see how good I am at hosting your show. (laughs) I know. (laughs) The tables have turned. I don't know. If it makes you feel better, I'm also like, oh, I have to ask. The questions this time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> nope. I I I don't recognize the dog when it was when it got shaved. <laughs> she looks <laughs> she looks so flat. <laughs> I know. I was like, did you get a new dog? What's going on? What's happening? Uh huh. Nope. Let's see. I have to talk about where people find me on the internet, right? Okay, good. Yeah. Um, I think that, I still know the answer to that question. <laughs> is that is that where you uh, just go into Panda's talking game mode and list off all the stuff? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see what kind of show we end up with at the end here. And it'll um, maybe funny. it'll be character creation cast. Maybe it won't, but... <laughs> character panda cast? Yeah. I was, you, you... <laughs> Panda creation. I have a little bit of like this, like, um, um, you know what happens when you make me those things, right? I'm like, I don't feel like, I don't feel like, I don't feel like this is an unknown territory, what you get when you're like, send a host a thing. I'm like, well, you're, yeah, I'm going to talk a lot. I'll, uh, and then I'll yeah. shut up and let you talk. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Hey, we're just the guests here. You get to decide how much you want to talk. It's true. It, well, actually, but that's exactly the thing, right? Is that you should talk a lot more than me because you're the guest. Should really? We? Well, you would think that. <laughs> and yes. Well, funny thing. When I'm I, on this show. So when, when I run this through Otter AI and assign names to all the, the parts that, that are talky talky, um, it gives a percentage of how much of the episode each person talks. That's really cool and interesting. Uh-huh. I am now um, fascinated. I, yeah. 
I would use the word terrified to find the answer personally, <laughs> but concerned. <laughs> We got the spectrum it's, there it's from, from fascinated <laughs> to terrified with concern in the middle. <laughs> and how, how do I how do I rank? We're we're pretty on par with one another at about like, you know, between twenty and thirty percent or so. Oh, that's and then, about where we should be. Yeah, and then the guests are usually like fifty to sixty percent total, um oh, or okay. so, uh, which is really nice. So um, we took about as much as our guests do. That's okay. No nah, that. about half. We're about half. Which There's is, two which, of us, and then usually like one or two guests. So yeah, that's yeah, about. I half. mean, that sounds about right to me. Yeah, so we'll see where the the rankings come in at the end. I guess. Do you do outtakes? <laughs> All right, so no, of I course we, we win. do. It's of course we do. We win. Oh, it's a competition now. <laughs> I told you, I learned from Panda Talking <laughs> Games and from it's other podcasts of I that era. My apologies. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, so I'm, I won't worry about anything but not cussing. Right, right. exactly. And we'll bleep that out if it happened. Okay, I will. Uh, with my uh, language. Uh, bleep. And we'll just be very disappointed. <laughs> yep. oh, no. no, here's the thing if I can handle not swearing through four hours of recording, I think you can too. Oh, I'm very sure that I can. It's just I don't worry about it at all for pandas because I'm just right. like, no. whatever. Right. So, yeah. Nope. Okay. Are we ready? All right. Yep. I'll do a five count and then we'll get going. Um, because I'm I'm purple still, right? I am. Yes. You didn't, you didn't mess that up y for me. No, no, that would be way too confusing. Okay. <laughs> right. I, I'm so wearing rough. pain meds today. I was like, I'm gonna be. I'm going to be okay for this recording. I'm not going to be on drugs. Mm -hmm. um, but I could not handle that. Yeah, you no. Yeah, you're, you, you are purple. Uh, Senda is my color, orange. So okay. I'm the one that has to pay attention here. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Don't say the orange parts. Okay. Yep. I'm not editing anything right now, but I'm still like, mm, I'm very busy. <laughs> like, this is the only podcast I'm actively doing at the moment, despite the other two that I'm like, planning and working on um but that's still too much the day that perfect ai editing exists is the day that it's over for everyone who wants to make a podcast mm -hmm. yeah yeah there's gonna be so many <laughs> there's like no longer gonna be an excuse not to like exactly. that's the thing i think that keeps most of us sane is like mm, but i don't have the time to edit i don't even edit that so i'm down to one podcast and i don't even edit it anymore i just put post-production stuff at the beginning of the year i'm like oh we're we're intelligent right it's, we it's sound fine good. enough it's cool close enough just yeah. chop it here chop it chop there it. throw it into the episode and you're good it's to go done. i used to be very, wash your hands i have strong opinions in terms of if i'm going to clean up a show a lot about you know exactly what gets edited and how i deal with ums and ahs and stuff and i just mm. oh, there was a pandemic a panini i threw it all out the window <laughs> I, but you know what though, like when I was doing Garbage of the Five Rings too, even that I like didn't edit very much. There's something about when it's only like two people talking too. It's I think easier. that like, mm -hmm. and once you built a rapport with that person too, that like you don't need to edit yeah. almost. It's I mean, sometimes you do, yeah. but mm -hmm. not nearly as much. Yeah. So. Yeah. This will be our first uh, series that w has been edited by a guest. So. Whoa. Which is me, I guess. I was like, I was like I'm not editing. I was like, I don't even edit this. <laughs> no. I was like, I'm not doing it. it. <laughs> like, scared us all there, right? No, no. Everybody's See, face I, was I wasn't like... particularly scared. I was more just concerned about the next episode of your podcast not existing. Because <laughs> right. it me. Well, it's it wasn't a shame no one will ever get to yeah. hear about Chimera. Yeah, it'll be, it's a shame. <laughs> Mine used to all be like on a bookshelf in my room and then I moved and now all my RPG stuff is out in the living room. And so every time we record, I'm like, shoot, it's not right next to me like it was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <I'm... sighs> Mine is actually failure. usually right next to me, but um, they went out into the living room on Thursday night for my my personal game night and they didn't come back. So, <laughs> <laughs> so not prepared. Yeah, so not prepared. Mm -hmm. Here we are. All right. <laughs> Gosh, I was still married. Oh, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think the answer is the same, right? <laughs> Although, actually, at one time, I wasn't married then. I, I think I got oh, divorced in 2015. But, 
Right, but, I get, but you get but it. I get you get it. <laughs> I'm with you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one asked me what I was up to in 2017. You don't want the answer. <laughs> now, you were so married too. <laughs> now I'm fascinated, but... I was graduating high school. Oh, I feel oh. really old oh. now. Oh. Okay. I told you. I told you. You don't want the answer. 2017, I, I, had, a, I had a kindergarten No, 2016. Bar. No, no, no. For the 20, 2017, no. I, I was out of high school then. It's fine. It's good. Oh. It's fine. <laughs> one year, one year past. I was first year college. Past. Yeah, there you go. Oh man, twenty seventeen. <laughs> I had like an eight year old. <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, it was yeah. born in twenty eleven. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I know. Send it over here nodding. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we had already been like married and then unmarried and then like, had kids. I was, like yeah. single parenting. Like, like, like ran all the gamut <laughs> by that point. <laughs> Bad life decisions came back from the bad life decisions. We did it. Like, we undid right? it. It's fine. <laughs> That's also the year I discovered tabletop RPGs, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. So. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fluffy kitty. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're going to have meows now. I didn't think of this when I left the door open. I was like, I'm home I, alone. I have, <laughs> I have no problems with that. That's a big kitty. He's, mm-hmm. he's got a feather duster for a tail. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. <laughs> he's great. I love him. <laughs> you have to leave. You're meowing. <laughs> you have to be quiet or you're going to have to leave. What's it going to oh. be? Ah. Okay. I'm so sorry. Give me one second. I'll remove the cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Come here. I'm actually going to go grab something else to drink real quick, too. Oh, sure. I'm just about out. Seems like a good time. Kitty, go bye-bye. Good thing you edit this show. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Meow. <laughs> oh. While, 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 while we were doing kitty and water yes. break, I got distracted by a tweet. Uh, which is, you discovered that a friend has, improbable though it may sound, never seen a movie. Their parents didn't show them any growing up, and they've never been interested until now. You've got to show them five films to convince them of the power of the medium. What no, five do you choose? that's impossible. Oh, no. That's impossible. You're right? Uh, my list so far has started with <laughs> Spider-Verse and Knives Out. Okay. Mm. Okay. Good. Yes. Get, get one of the best yep. animations. A really uh-huh. good mystery. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, right? That's yeah. what distracted me. Anyways, back to this recording. Yeah. <laughs> Can't hear you. Oh, Amelia, you are... I see you making no. mouth noise, but... What did you have to pick? You had to pick five... Five, five what? movies? Five movies. Five movies. To show a person who has never seen movies before, and you have to convince them in five movies only of the power of the medium. Oh, I would also pick Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz is solid. Hot Fuzz is solid. Right it's a great, uh, great comedy slash buddy cop movie. Maybe mm-hmm. um, I love that movie so much. That's, that's solid. But pick. your other two are excellent. Um, I also would pick His Girl Friday, which is like an old Cary Grant okay. movie, mm. uh, black I and white. See. But it's like one of the first movies where they did overlapping dialogue. Um, oh, so good. I love that movie so much. It's my, All right. it's my hot takes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Our- we were at, I believe we were at additional moves. No, you talked about those. I believe yep. we're at the we're fellowship, pool. Fellowship, <laughs> pool. <laughs> yes. fellowship pool. Fellowship pool. Fellowship pool, yeah. Nope. And this is why I don't envy your podcast, because editing character creation is like the hardest part, and you do it mm. for a whole show, and then you have to edit <laughs> all of it. <laughs> All the silences, yes, all of there's so much time while people are thinking or writing or yeah. like. It's just uh, clean it up, truncate silence. Good to go. No, no. <laughs> yeah, but there's also like talking in the background, like while we're doing those things. Yeah. It's not just. For or example, also like dramatic I'm pauses. i for you right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is all going in the outtake, so it's fine. <laughs> Mm. Instead of saying I'm ruining it for you by continuing to talk. Oh, excuse me. I couldn't mute myself fast enough. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I went on.
went out to the kitchen to get water and I was like, I forgot to move my bread. No. <laughs> oh, no. So I moved the bread. It's okay. It's a very forgiving recipe. Um, and then now it just has to like re-rise again in its oh. actual shaped form. So unbaked so. bread. Yeah, yeah, it's not baked. Okay. I'm like, why but, would you be moving baked bread? What's going on? So the cat on? doesn't get it, obviously. I mean, that's pretty. I mean, yes. But no, it hasn't been baked yet. But then, so now it'll rise. It's just about four. So it'll rise till about 5.30. And then I'll turn the oven on. And then I'll have fresh baked bread for dinner. Ooh, yeah. And that might be all I eat because... What more could fresh, you eat? Fresh break fresh bread. Baked Maybe bread. if you had like oh some God. sliced cheese or like uh, like apple slices yeah. to go with it. Mm. That would be really I good. like doing like I got I've got I've got all sorts of stuff to put on fresh bread. Mm-hmm. The one thing that has come out of this pandemic for me, as I'm sure with many, is that I make bread now. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Consistently. <laughs> So that's that's effectively how it's split up. I'm using the word effectively way too much, so I'll probably cut one of those. Um. Say it again, Ryan. Say it again. I'll, say it, I'll effectively yeah. cut some of those. It's fine. Nope. Clickety click. Clickety click. Click click. Wow, that was such a radio voice count in. I was every time. Every it's time we do it, our guests are like, "Oh, why don't you talk like oh. that all the time?" Because oh it hurt. Well, I, did, I did the cold <laughs> open once for April Fool's Day uh, with that voice, and it was not a fun experience. <laughs> but that was like a 10 minute cold open uh, yeah I think I tried to whisper my way through that one you right. did yeah uh, ASMR it was, it was the ASMR opener yeah <laughs> Ricky voices are fun though they, they are. are fun next but year I mean, for real we're gonna do what I want for April Fool's though oh oh are you gonna tell us what it is or yeah is it I wanna secret? do I wanna do a GURPS series <laughs> yeah <laughs> For the Brilliant. for the April series for, for our April series for I want, April I want to do GURPS. <laughs> I would love to learn about GURPS finally. I mean, if you if you want people for who probably aren't available but who are really good at GURPS, you could check out the film Reroll Crew. Oh, mm. and poke them because I think maybe, we asked maybe even like Jeff and John, and they were like, "We like to make fun of GURPS, but we don't really yeah know it." Because <laughs> film Reroll does all their stuff in GURPS, um, and there's blanking on his name but they have someone who helps them actually set up like who isn't part of the cast most of the time who's just there to do backstage stuff who like helps create the characters and the systems so he might be someone who'll be around to do that oh that's cool. good to know because mm-hmm. i really want but here's the question are they cool with the fact that i don't really care about gurps <laughs> yeah that's the I thing i have no idea you have to find someone uh, who but knows one of the players it, also okay like took three years to learn gurps so drugs <laughs> yep yeah exactly i mean that's fair um, cause we, we bashed Heroes Unlimited quite a bit, uh, with good reason. I mean, that, that series was so fun and it's it so much fun to listen back to. Like Jeff and John are hilarious for starters. Like they're just funny. Um, <laughs> and I just, I love when we get to the point where they're making up rules to see if I'll believe them. Like... <laughs> <laughs> because it's Paletti. Because it's Paletti. And they're like, well, actually, if you go and look at the book, and then I'm like, I don't, is that, is that true? I don't <laughs> like to see, like, just how far they can go and how many exasperated sighs. Like, I think somebody had mm-hmm. a counter when they were listening to how many exasperated sighs I let out in that series. There's so many. <laughs> so, it's so There's many. so many. So many. <laughs> Something like... An hour ago, I had it in my head. Oh, I should say that uh, because it, it's relevant to something, but now I don't remember what it was. I just realized yeah. I got all the uh, character sheet stuff up, but I didn't pull up the, the episode notes. I got to do that real quick. There you go. Sorry. Yeah, if I need to see them both at the same time, then I have to do some rearranging here for the moment. <laughs> you probably don't. Because, I, uh, I probably don't. <laughs> we're, we're full, we're full on in character mode. Um, and then we just introduce our characters at the beginning of next episode. Um, okay. So we'll just talk a bit about our, 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 our characters. And then um, and we're then we got fanfic next episode. Relationships today, yeah? Backstory. Backstory. Well, I mean, I, but I did that part. But we got to talk about it. I, okay, well, fine. <laughs> I guess you want them to hear about Ryan, it. Ryan, it's not your show. You don't get to tell <laughs> her oh, what I'm doing today. <laughs> that's Excuse true. Excuse you. <laughs> I think that's actually what I had. Uh, okay, so um, I threw a tweet out there uh, at LeVar Burden to uh, see if uh, he wanted to do uh, role play Rainbow, um, a take on reading Rainbow for kids, for RPGs. 
uh, which would be really fun. But uh, if he says, yeah, but you have to commit fully to this and nothing else, I might have to leave C3 uh, <laughs> for LeVar Burton. <laughs> Uh, I would honestly, understand. You know, yeah, like of I could all you. If you were like Chimera as a solo for, project now, I'd understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean look, I've been left Gosh. I've been left for worse reasons. You know? That's all I'm saying. I mean, if LeVar Burton calls and says, Hey, let's do this project, but you gotta you gotta move to LA or something, then be like, Well, that's that's probably what's gonna if happen. If somebody now. was like, Who's your one podcasting freebie? and you said LeVar Burton, I'd be like, Okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad we have all this recorded. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> there you go. So if you want to take Isn't over, so he going to go like host Jeopardy or something now, though. So he's probably great. Everybody say. wants him to. I don't know if he's officially going to. Um, apparently, that's doing, part of doing... why Aaron Rodgers wants to leave the Green Bay Packers. By the way, yeah, because so he can go of host Jeopardy. Uh, yeah, exactly. Which, like, good riddance. Go host Jeopardy. Though. I mean, <laughs> really, what it comes down to is, I don't have a problem hosting tons of shows as long as, as we you discussed last time, you don't have to. Edit. I don't have to edit them. Yeah. <laughs> right. I would still probably yeah. edit. I yeah. don't think Lavar yeah. Burton has to. I don't. <laughs> I don't think Lavar Burton <laughs> is going to be your editor. And I just don't no. I feel like that's. If Lavar Ver- if Lavar Burton's involved, uh, maybe we can pull some strings to get maybe C3 he knows somebody. Edited. That's probably true. <laughs> maybe you could take some of your reading rainbow money and pay somebody to edit this show, right? <laughs> Hey, future Ryan, future Ryan, uh, cut all this out. Cut all of this out. That's why. Uh, uh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Nope. Isn't that, Amelia? It's y'all's jobs as co-hosts to get us back on track. Oh, That's okay. true. We're just Sorry. so good. Yeah. We're busy being single moms right now, yeah. so. Sometimes we just have to connect okay. on this front. Maybe like, somebody else can take on a little bit of the work for once. <laughs> Well, so normally, like when we when we start up, I like start with like the intro and stuff, Ryan. But like, yeah, I don't, we were somewhere we're kind of yeah, like in the middle of a thing. We so. are just about to get into the backstory questions. Okay. Um. So I think if we just start with a five seconds of silence and just go right into as backstory. if we never did anything. Okay. Uh, we've been here all along. We've been we here all along. Recording. Studio. Although, um, I think Amr, your your quality might be different because you're using a different mic, but that's fine. Is uh, am I not going for the right microphone? I am going through the right well, microphone. I think you were on a headset last time. No, yeah, I had the headphones on, but I used oh, this microphone always. Fun. Uh, my headphones I, are just not charged, uh, and I can't find their cable. Oh, um, so I'm go. using you, low quality earphones. Do you have? That's fine. Do you have the springy thing on your desk? Yeah. Okay, here's a really funny thing, and I had to do this. Do you see how this ribbon? <laughs> if you bump your desk and I desk, I just heard it, which is why I mentioned it. It goes brong because yeah. the springs go fighting. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying. I've been meaning to set up a shock mount with it, but for the most part, I just don't touch my deck. Well, even the shock mount, like I had a shock mount on mine, but that 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 spring. Just... I'm telling you, this right, you just there's literally just a ribbon wrapped around the bottom part mm. of it, so it's touching. Mm. Why so Senda is the queen both of podcasting and crafting yeah. together. I see. It. Like, like if you just like wrap a string or something around it so that there's something to absorb the shock it will fix it <laughs> i feel like you should have okay. like your, I have your pot, like arms like should all be like years. decorated too you uh, should like it needs some yeah am i sounding different you're saying no you, f- you sound fine i just didn't know i i thought i saw you on your headset last time yeah. like oh that's really uh, good quality for a headset no no yeah. i have the headset has a mic i just rarely use it because yeah. i have this mic and why would i use that when i have this mic? that's true no See, you sound fine uh, there is a panda on it also there's the ribbon oh, around Beautiful. it and there's a little panda on it and that's Aww. my <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's facing the headset me is especially... not you <laughs> Ooh, Sorry. we're getting the full view okay <laughs> my question is do, 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 stalling for time. <laughs> <laughs> tabs. All right. Do you want me to stop my recording, Ryan? Yeah, let's oh, stop this stop. Uh, rec- Okay. I was going to say stop. E- All right. Woohoo. Woohoo. Part three. Part three. Is Third that, the, is that the right pronunciation? Do you want a five count at the beginning of this one? Yes, please. I'm going to do it because I'm going to free the first one who talks. Ha ha. Got to find the, that part of Amelia. The... <laughs> <laughs> that was the silent part. No, sorry. I'm trying to like find the right part of the like outline to be in. And it's just like, oh, it's, it's like okay. scrolling all the way up and then all the way back. All the way down. Yeah. One thing it's at a like time. Okay. Halfway in the middle. Okay. Okay. Are yeah. we ready? Yeah. Okay. 
I would actually like to quickly answer the previous question. Oh, or sure. and, and then to the then Sorry. And then jump back to the... <laughs> yes. No, that's fine. Go for it. I'll make more, Ryan do more editing. Yeah. That's fine. That's on Ryan to deal with. Uh, um, okay. Now, forward in time to a movie question. <laughs> or backwards in time. I don't know where that's going to get yeah. put in. Oh, well. <laughs> Whatever Ryan does with this. That's on uh, editor Ryan. That's yeah. fine. Nailed it. Nailed it. As long as that's Huzzah. not the nailed it, nailed it, like the, like, da Pinterest fail, nailed it. Then we're good. Actual, like, nailed it. Thank you so much for tuning into Character <laughs> Creation Cast. We have totally nailed our outros. <laughs> <laughs> and now we will click on the stop button oh. so that we can add this uh -huh. to the outtakes in three, two, one. Two.